I don't know who I am anymore. Hello all and welcome back to Killer Shroof Fans Killer Toy Reviews. We have got yet another Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom review for you today. This video was requested by Gumball the Baby Triceratops and they fittingly requested we take a look at this. The new, for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, Triceratops Roarivore toy. Now, I don't know about you, this was actually not one of my top picks. Um, not that I didn't like it, it just, it was so, you know, eh to me. It was what I, you know, it's a Triceratops toy. I've seen those a million times, everyone has. Triceratops this, Triceratops that. Uh, same with the T-Rex, but the T-Rex is the icon of the franchise, so, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, but it's a great toy, don't get me wrong, but it was honestly going to be one of the last that I picked up. But then I saw it in person, and it was just love at first sight. So I grabbed it, I bought it, and I brought it back here. Wasn't going to be the next one that I reviewed, but since Gumball the Baby Triceratops requested it, we are going to give you guys a closer look at this Roarivore. And as always, we will start off with the packaging. So without further ado, let's do this. So if we start off with taking a closer look at the packaging, you've got the Jurassic World logo up in the top left corner, the bars of the cage in keeping with the theme of taking the dinos off Isla Nublar, Owen and Blue down in the bottom left corner, the three plus years warning, the Triceratops logo, this Triceratops is part of the Roarivore line, and a diagram of the action feature that comes with this particular dinosaur. You get a head ramming action. Going up the side of the packaging, you can see the trees of Isla Nublar silhouetted against the eruption of Mount Saibo. You've got the roaring dinosaur emblem there, and if we move across the top, you can see Mount Saibo erupting, glorious colors there, and a push button indicator for the action feature so you can try it in stores. Very eye-catching box art, as always, from Mattel. If we take a look at the back of the box, you've got a lovely diagram of the Triceratops and a note indicating push button for head ramming action. And there you can see the roar and the button and a beautiful image of the Triceratops itself. We are reminded in the top right corner to get the Jurassic Facts app where you can scan your dinosaur's foot into the game and be a part of the digital action of Jurassic World. The bottom Oh, excuse me, the top left corner features the Jurassic World logo once again, along with Triceratops. And in the bottom, you can see the other dinosaurs part of the Wave 1 Roarivore line. You've got the Allosaurus, Baryonyx, and Metriacanthosaurus, which we have reviewed. Link is in the description. Alright now, that's enough hullabaloo about the overall appearance of this packaging here. So without further ado, we are going to crack this guy out of his cardboard prison and give you a closer look. Now, you've heard me say time and time again that the one area that Mattel really falls down in is in the fact that these are really one and done package um, dealios here. Um, even if you could uh, retread these these uh, tags, these plastic tag wire things, which you can't really do. Um, these Roarivores come with a detached tail, so you have to click it into place, and once you've done that, you can't take it off, and as such, this won't fit back in the box. So really, it doesn't matter how you open this per se, but there is something kind of cool that you can do with this once you have it open, and we're going to show you that here. So to open this, you've got a bunch of areas of tape holding this thing in. You've got one on the top here, and, you know, it might be wiser to use something even finer than scissors here, like a box cutter of some sort, because, yeah, I'm just, this is a very thin space to get scissors into. But if you kind of pull at it, you can kind of get in there with scissors. As always, be careful, don't wind up like me. So there's the two on the top, and on the side here, you've got uh, one, two, three, it looks like. One done, two done, and, you well, know, that one's gonna be kinda tough to get at there. Yeah, don't do that, kids. <laughs> All right, so, and then we can take this and just kind of slide it out. Maybe, there we go. And as you can see, once it's detached, 
you can kind of have this as a diorama display area, you know? I mean, obviously you're gonna have to free the dinosaur itself, but this can be removed and kept as a display. You can have your dinosaur mounted up against the eruption of Mount Saibo, and it really is just like an image from the upcoming film. So I think that's kind of cool. Maybe that's just me getting overly excited about something simple. But without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, do the rest of this, shall we? Uh, uh, I hate that part. And then this part on the back, you could technically salvage, but again, I don't see the point. I mean, it's just me clinging on to one last hope that I'll be able to somehow get this trike back in the box and have it mint. So there you can see we've got her out there, and then back here is the tail, which, you know, um, is taped on there. Oh, this is so hard on me. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And then there are instructions back here as well. We can just sneak those out. So that's gonna do it for that piece there. The instructions here are fairly straightforward. Um, kind of tells you all about putting the, what pieces come where and how to install them, how to uh, install the batteries, how to activate the um, gimmick itself. But that's enough of that. Let's clear out our space here and bring in the Triceratops. And as you can see, she is missing something and that is of course her stubby little tail. So let's go ahead and slide that into place. Snaps right in and you can't do anything about it now. It's done. Nothing to be done. Oh, oh it's so hard. Hey, but look, it's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Yay, I can hold it. I can play with it. Oh, maybe it's worth it after all. All right, so there is the Triceratops out of the packaging, and we are going to give you a closer look at her, starting with the head. So if we take a closer look at our Triceratops here, here is the face. You can see lovely wrinkles and uh, bony protrusions. The eye is very lifelike and seated nicely in there. The horns feature some lovely texture and giving it a nice lived in look. And the frill features scales of varying sizes and shapes along with small little scoots protruding from the um, edge area. Um, so the level of detail on this head is fantastic and looking at it from the front you really get a, a great sense of all the work that went into it and it also looks very intimidating it looks as if this triceratops's head is lowered and it is in an attack position and it looks fantastic if we move down the body you've got awesome sculptural scale details i mean it is just beautiful stuff here lovely sagging wrinkles uh where gravity is working on them around the leg area and that is just a lovely sculptural detail something akin to papo or safari not what i would expect in jurassic so just the fact that they did something like this is really just indicative of how awesome mattel has done for us and as you can see the scale details continue all the way down to the tip of the stubby tail and it's all just so beautiful Moving up the opposite side, it's really the same story. Scales, wrinkles, pulling skin away from the torso as the legs are flexing forward or backwards. Lovely musculature in the thigh there, the sagging skin where gravity is working. And then we get up to that beautiful, lifelike um, head with the textured horns, beak, everything has been addressed on this Triceratops model. The legs are in a pretty neutral pose, standing pretty stock still on the ground, yet they feature some glorious skin details, particularly in the elbow and knee region. You've got some lovely folds of skin, really gives this a natural look, and as you can see, the scales continue down onto this. I mean, this, this sculpture is just incredible. There's really no two ways about it. The musculature in the thigh is so well addressed, it looks so incredibly realistic and lifelike. And if we flip to the other side, it's really the same story. My only grievance is that the toe claws, front and back, have not been painted. And that really is unfortunate, but then I just look at that sagging skin and all is forgiven. Now, this Triceratops features uh, a few areas of articulation, uh, just like all of Mattel's figures do. Uh, you've got the front legs, they can go forward and backwards and kinda in, kinda out, not really all that much. Same thing on the other foot, in, out, forward, backwards. They're kind of hindered by the carved out areas. The back legs, forward, backwards, they can go pretty far around, um, but they do have sort of snapping points. You can kind of see them snap into place 
um, which really just gives it more stability and guarantees that the joints won't wear out over time. And uh, really that's all there is. Then the head kind of has like a ball and socket joint, which just lends itself to the action feature really. If we move across the underbelly, you can see the carved out speaker area. It looks like a Spinosaurus or something got a hold of this Triceratops and just freaking gutted it. I mean, that that speaker system is very, very off-putting. It looks like this thing has been injured in some way. The back right foot, I believe that's, the, yeah, the right foot features the Jurassic World emblem, and the back left foot features the um, scan code for the Jurassic Facts app. So if you want to scan that into your phone, now is your chance. Don't say I don't do anything for you. Now, as far as the uh, paint scheme goes on this model, it's pretty straightforward. You've got a kind of rust brown color our orange color and then a sort of brown dorsal striping that carries onto the frill. Grades really nicely on the frill, I might add. Um, and then you've got some sort of light, dusty colors on the back of the thigh, kind of like uh, as if it was kicking up dust as it walked and that just kind of collected there. I don't really like that, but uh, then again, who am I to tell Mattel how to do their work? The thing that does bother me is the harsh cutoff with the brown dorsal striping. As you can see, it just flat up ends. It doesn't drizzle out, it doesn't taper off, it just ends. There's a clear cut ending point. And I really do wish they went the extra mile and just carried it down onto the uh, tail. I think that would make it so much better. Okay, now is as good a time as any to show you the action feature on this Triceratops. It has a head ramming attack action with a roar. So Triceratops, any words for the viewer today? <laughs> Uh-huh, uh-huh, very well put. Anything else on that? Oh, I see, I understand, I understand. Um, what else, what, what other thoughts do you have on the matter? Oh, okay, nice T-Rex roar in there. Really, really gives your uh, case some uh, clout. Mm-hmm, any parting words for our viewers today? Thank you very much, Triceratops. Very well said. <laughs> so yes, it looks like we've got about um, five or so sounds. Some of them stomping, growls, bellows, and of course the signature T-Rex roar, which makes its way into seemingly every electronic dinosaur toy from the Jurassic toy line. I don't know why, but it does. All right, so let's move on before I throw a fit. Now, as far as the size goes, you're looking at right around 11 and a half inches long from the tip of the tail all the way to the tip of those horns, which is about 29 centimeters. And then if we measure the height from the base all the way to the highest point, which I think is the frill in this case, you're looking at right around four and a quarter inches off the ground, which is about 11 centimeters. So very decent size. For a quick size comparison, we're going to go ahead and bring in the Metriacanthosaurus recently reviewed on the channel, and of course, she is not going to stand up. There we go. All right, we figured it out. And I think these two size up very well together, and they look incredibly play compatible. Kids are going to have so much fun with these guys. They can just, the, the, the Metriacanthosaurus can bite those horns and head, the trike can just throw them up and off. Oh, this is fun and the trike emerges victorious. Yes, I think these two make for great playthings. And like I said, the fact there's going to be no paint on these on these horns by the end of this because kids are just going to ram them up right into that Metriacanthosaurus or any other dinosaur toy. And I love the bobbing head effect that we get. Now, of course, as with any of our Jurassic World reviews, we have to bring in the old Kenner's or Hasbro stuff. Here we have a repaint from Hasbro of the old Kenner Lost World Triceratops. Um, great little model here, and honestly, I do think these two are pretty play compatible. I mean, the uh, Mattel one looks like an adult. Perhaps the uh, Hasbro repaint is a juvenile of some sort. So yes, I do think these ones are play compatible. Next up, we have the um, Jurassic Park original Kenner Triceratops, and Overall, as you can see, they're all different sizes. If we were gonna have these as a family, I would say Kenner Triceratops is the parent, little Hasbro Triceratops here is the baby, and uh, then the Mattel one would be the uh, juvenile. And yeah, they all feature a similar action feature. You kinda trigger it and they all throw their head back in some way. Not sure what it is about that, but um, that seems to be the way to go. 
But yes, overall, these two are pretty play compatible, the Mattel and the Hasbro. As far as the Kenner one, uh, you're kind of pushing it there. I mean, granted, they look very similar in style, sculpturally speaking, um, with the scaling and everything, but really, beyond that, I wouldn't say they're play compatible. Well, everyone, that is going to do it for our look at the new for 2018 Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom Triceratops toy. Overall, I think this is a fantastic model, one of the best from the Roarabore lineup, and I'm very glad I added it to the collection. If you were to ask me who done it better, Mattel or Kenner or Hasbro in this case, that's a tricky one. I absolutely love the Jurassic Park 3 Triceratops that was given to us from Hasbro. I know I'm probably in the minority there, but I honestly think out of all of the sculptures, it was the most Triceratops to me. It looked identical to the one we saw in Jurassic Park, even down to the fact that it had sort of a curled up ankle, uh, similar to the the sick trike had. Um, so, if and maybe it's just my nostalgia playing in, because I grew up with that toy. My brother had that, I had the T-Rex. Um, and um, we would fight each other with those. Maybe it's my nostalgia, but I honestly think this is one of the times that Hasbro has done it better. Nothing against this trike model, it is fantastic, but I really love the sculpture and the action features of the Jurassic Park 3 React Attack Jurassic Park dinosaur toy. So I think hell has frozen over. Hasbro is going to win it for me today. You can all probably disagree with me, and I'd love to hear all of your thoughts on it down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed our review today, don't be afraid to let us know by leaving a like button, and also don't forget to subscribe on the way out, uh, as we got a lot more Jurassic World reviews coming your way. Thanks again, and bye bye